Greetings all, this is Dickie Adams with PocketNow.com and today we're taking a closer look on the software on the Motorola Photon 4G for Sprint. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. So the Motorola Photon 4G is running Android version 2.3.4, Gingerbread. And it has been updated to the most recent update that just came out for the Photon recently. If we go up here to display, we can see another kind of the in new interesting feature. In-pocket detection uh, is a kind of a neat functionality when you put the device in your pocket. If the screen is on, it'll automatically turn off if you have this enabled. And the kickstand enable allows you to turn on a new mode when you kick the kickstand out, which we'll show you in just a second here. So I've got the kick stand out now, and you see here I've got a couple of options. And I, I didn't set to remember my selection yet because I wanted to make sure to see you could see what happens here when you kick the kick stand out. You get the home screen or widget clock, and if you choose widget clock, then it launches into this mode here where you get a large, nice large clock, the weather, a couple of pages of, of icons that you can cycle through and use. You've got some alarm clocks. You can close this uh view and then this little button right here changes the brightness so when I tap this it's going to get really dark because uh, we've got a lot of light on this camera or on this device right now so it goes so dark that you can't even see this the device right now but in a nighttime mode this is actually very handy to be able to see and when you close the kickstand it goes right back to the standard view if you have that enabled under battery and data manager we have data saver and battery mode which allows you to modify how the battery is used nighttime saver to get you a little more battery life in the evening times or performance mode uh, you can customize those settings uh, same thing with data saver you can tell data to turn off at certain times and to use data in certain ways especially important for those who are on small data plans or aren't, aren't on unlimited plans this is a sprint device so there's not a whole lot of uh, non unlimited data plans out there but since this is a world phone that feature is important because when you're overseas data can cost you a lot more when you're using the the internal sim card or another sim card as far as the home screen is concerned as you can see it comes with a lot of extra widgets I happen to add that one uh, the power control but a lot of other functionality that's here on the widgets uh, also these notification buttons here to tell you what's on like the GPS and 4G service and the cycle 4G are not available up here in the sprint notification bar area like on some devices. To add a widget to the screen you simply tap and hold like you would expect on any other Android launching application. If you want to move one around it creates kind of this green uh, hazy and with the pintail screen, it's really hard on the eyes. It kind of makes this, uh, you can kind of see it on the screen there, the sliding back and forth, almost like a bad tie on a TV show. As far as the star bar down here, it comes default with the phone dialer, browser, sprint ID, and the app launcher. And you can see the multiple uh, sliders down there at the, at the bottom, the, the indicator to which uh, screen you're on. You can replace these icons by tapping and holding and then choosing whatever icon you like. Thankfully, the Sprint ID is not stuck there. If you move the Sprint ID, it's also under the Settings menu as well. Of course, there's a lot of bloat on here. You've got the NASCAR app. You've got the Sprint Music Plus, Sprint Radio, Sprint TV and Movies, which the Sprint TV and Movies only works on 3G service. It doesn't work through your Wi-Fi, so that means that the quality of the service is not all that great, even when 4G. But you can uninstall some of these uh, applications. As you can see here, I've got NASCAR here, and I can actually pull this NASCAR app out. If I go down here to Sprint Zone, on the other hand, there's no options. You can add these to groups, and if you go up here to apps, you can see there's a Sprint group. So you could create your own custom group to kind of hide those, or you could just ignore them like most people do, or root the device and take them all out yourself. It's also got a nice little market access button up here at the top, and it is running the new market view. Interesting note, Skype Although it's supposed to work with most Gingerbread devices, it does not work with the front-facing camera or any camera really on the Motorola Photon 4G, which is a little disappointing. 
Netflix does run just fine, although the video can be a little blurry because of the pin tile technology. Some of the other software that's on here that's pretty typical of Motorola is social networking or the media. I find that with the social networking, when you add a social account, you can choose Facebook or Twitter and post to that. But I found that really the the content that's produced or what you see on the widget for those type of applications in this messaging system is not as good as the native apps, such as the Twitter app or Facebook app, etc. As far as a browser is concerned, it's relatively fast. Uh, it got a little bogged down, especially with our site, with a little bit of in the flash piece or any animation that appeared in the middle of the screen. Uh, and again, because it's pin tile, when you start scrolling up and down, it has a tendency to get blurry. But as you can see here, I'm scrolling up and down here, and it's still trying to finish loading. And it seems just a little sluggish. And this possibly to do, I'm taking this more into account because I've been using another newer device recently that has been just butter smooth on the browser. But as you can see here, this is our site and it's a little sluggish, probably because of this little T-Mobile ad here, but it's still hesitant, not very scroll, uh, smooth scrolling. Uh, not very usable. I mean, it's usable, but it's 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 frustrating when you're trying to scroll in and out. As far as keyboard options go, with the Motorola Photon 4G, you have this multi-touch keyboard, which you can see here has predictive text, or you can go with swipe, which also comes default uh, installed. The mobile hotspot is enabled on this particular device, but the PR documentation is quick to point out that you have to have a Sprint account in order to be able to do that. Of course, there are ways around this, as you all are probably aware. As for the camera and the camcorder, there is no way to uh, turn off the shutter sound. Every time it takes a picture, you're going to hear the shutter sound. There's no setting to turn it off, and I've checked several places to try to disable it. Unfortunately, it doesn't exist as far as the built-in camera app. There are some settings available as far as scenes go and effects. You can turn the flash on and off, you can rotate the camera, and you can switch the camcorder here or switch the gallery. The colors on the device uh, when it takes a photo are a little muted and don't quite match up right. In fact, it, it's hard to see on the screen, but the difference between this orange color and the red color are are really hard to tell. Although it is lacking the bluish tint that was prone to the Droid 3. You can press and hold on the, the shutter button up here and it will focus on whatever you want. And if you want to, there's no tap to focus, but you can tap and hold the square to set the focus point. There is a camera button up at the top, but it's single phase only. You press it down and it takes the shot automatically. There are a few more settings here. Picture resolution is set to widescreen by default. I have it switched to large so I can take some pictures for the final review. Video resolution is 720p only, and you can see you can change the exposure and the storage location there. Uh, but other than that, you don't get a whole lot of functionality, and the camera is just okay. It's not really anything to write home about. It's an all right device for what you get, but with some caveats. Gallery for this device kind of gives you this stacked look and there's not a whole lot you can do to change that uh, view. You can have it show your friends activities or you can go right into the camera roll and see pictures uh, from there as well. Some other apps to note on the Motorola Photon 4G that are included by default. Uh, Google Books is there. Manage a SIM card because this is a world uh, phone. Obviously, you need to have that. A quick Office, Rich Location, uh, all pretty standard apps as far as the phone world is concerned. There is a task manager built in, which is nice. So you don't have to download a third party app. Telenav GPS Navigator is just like Telenav GPS Navigator on uh, any other Sprint device that you've used. WebTalk Connector, uh, we'll get to in just a moment. This is the HD station, the productivity series from Motorola for the Photon 4G. It comes with a little remote. 
and the remote has a directional keypad on it to navigate, not the mouse, but to navigate through scrolling up and down, left and right. It's got the same uh, menu buttons. We've got a uh, settings button, a home button, a back button, and then maybe a little bit difficult to see in this uh, view here. You can also change the volume up and down and mute it. Other than that, this doesn't do a whole lot. It's got a small battery in it. It does work fairly well for what it is. Uh, your device, in this case the Photon, becomes a little touch mouse. Uh, it does the this dock has some USB ports on the back and it's got a left and right mouse button and a pop-up keyboard as appropriate. And then as far as the screen goes, you can see that <clears throat> over here we have our mobile view and it is the same as what you would normally see on your phone is so what's in the desktop mode right now. Up at the top we've got our notifications and then over here you've got your usual information like settings and 3G service and battery life, uh, new Gmail messages pop up as usual and then down across the bottom here we've got the dialer, contracts, contracts, contacts, uh, music, gallery, file manager, apps for webtop, Firefox, Facebook, and Sprint. Firefox is a older version, it's version 4 I believe, and as you can see it takes a good amount of time to actually start up and then suffers from some problems as far as how things run. Uh, you know, I'm bringing up a video here in this case which will run uh, just fine in a small view but as soon as you go uh, a large uh, full screen it goes quickly to um, gets really choppy. As far as performance goes on the main screen and on the device itself running Gingerbread, the performance is pretty good. I did find that it has a tendency to get bogged down every once in a while, has a tendency to need to go into the task manager and kill apps. As you can see, it kind of locked up there for just a moment, kind of stuck in one spot. This may be partially due to some of the animation, but I think it's just this particular device is is just struggling a little bit with speeds. Now you may be asking yourself why would I buy this particular device over a device that happens to be coming out in another couple of days that is the same price with the same software and probably runs smoother. And the answer to that is, is remember this is a world phone and the other device that comes out uh, which we'll be doing a hardware and software review on shortly is not a world phone and can't uh, be used overseas. Well, can't be used overseas on GSM networks. That wraps up our closer look at the software of the Motorola Photon 4G for Sprint. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below. If you'd like to have us answer a specific question in the final review or have a question about the device that you would like to see covered in the final review, please leave us a message below as well. Thanks for watching.